Um, <laughs> do I apply polish to the rag or directly to the screen first to do this? Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to be talking about data migration between computers. Uh, this can be used for Windows Autopilot deployment when you're refreshing someone's PC, giving them a new one to replace their old computer, and OneDrive, maybe you're not using it, maybe OneDrive doesn't capture everything, including the app data, the user profile information, and we want to we want to keep that data. This could also be used when you're migrating uh, a user to a new tenant, something we've been talking about a lot lately, and we want to keep that profile data um, to a new piece of hardware. So is this the right rag? Okay, I think user app data, um, basically moving over as, as much data as you will allow at, or, or as possible is the biggest challenge when refreshing hardware, right? Especially if uh, folks are remote. Right, if we're in this cloud managed autopilot deployment, um, you know, landscape, when you're issuing someone a new PC, how do we move everything from their old one? Right, nothing wrong with OneDrive known folder move, but it doesn't capture everything, and that is if you're using it. So, what we have here is um, something that we started with the tenant to tenant migration process, and you're going to see in a future. Um, uh, upgrade to that where we expand that to include new hardware. This is just a data migration piece. So um, let's talk about assumptions real quick and I'll, I'll show you the setup we have here. So we have a PC and this PC is, let's go ahead and look at the accounts. So this is Bob Freeman's PC and he is joined to the rubixdev.com tenant. And as you can see, we have our dummy data in here. So we have some documents on the desktop. We have some things in our documents folder. We have some pictures and I still have some things in downloads. Okay. What we also have now is we're issuing Bob a new PC, right? So when we issue Bob that new PC, he's going to get it and he can log into it, but notice it doesn't have his content. So let's take a look at the account here. So that has to be moved over, right? There we go. So this is Bob Freeman at stevecapacity.com. Okay. Um, one thing we can do, obviously, if you allow it, it is a security concern. Obviously data can be moved over, um, you know, manually, whether it's an external drive, although, you know, we got to assume not all users are savvy enough to do that. Um, now we could use a third party, right? There's Druva, there's Code42, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's subscription base, so that is a cost. But can we do this without a cost? You know what would be, you know would be a really good way to do this? Um, a really good way to do this would be if we could just directly move everything. Like, you know, you get your new PC, you leave your old PC on, and it just moves over. Ad hoc, peer-to-peer -peer connection. And that's what we've done here. So I'm gonna take you through some of the steps and the user experience. And then like everything else we do, we're gonna start working backwards into how we did it. So what I'm gonna do is on the current PC, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the company portal or I'll instruct Bob to open up the company portal. You see new PCs getting ready to run before you get it. Go ahead and run this. Now this isn't packaged as pretty as some of the other stuff, but this is a migration prep backup. So basic kind of does what it says it's gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and hit, it, hit install. And uh, we're going to take a look at some things here. So what we're doing is we are essentially we're gathering information about the device. But what we're also going to do is we're going to create a network share. We're going to create a network share for Bob's user directory, right? And it can only be accessed with new credentials we're giving uh, that share, a new account we're adding on the device. And we're doing this with PowerShell. Um, and what what's going to happen here is all the data we're grabbing here, we're using the same XML concept we use from our data migration. We're going to put this in blob storage, just the XML file, right? Um, so that we can read it you know, later on. So uh, we'll give this a minute or so and let this finish what it's doing. Okay, that was installed successfully. Um, what I want to do is I want to go over to my lab machine here and I want to open up the uh, container 
I have, right? So this is my blob storage. Uh, let me go ahead and hit refresh. So look at this. We got a host name dash Bob Friedman XML. So, so what's in there? Let's open that up. Now let's see what that looks like. So, so if you take a look at this, we're collecting quite a bit of information in this XML. Um, and this is going to be very helpful when we go to migrate things to a new PC. And this only exists in the blob. This local file doesn't stay on the device. So this isn't something Bob's going to be able to see. Um, so take a look. From that one PC, we're capturing the host name, the serial number, current OS version, installed memory. Um, we're giving it a share. So we're actually constructing a share called migrate. Right, we're making a user called share read, and we're we're putting that password up here. I'm gonna explain why in a second here, but we can see the total storage, the free storage. These are the locations we want to back up that have content in them. We're also listing out the applications. This isn't something we're gonna use now, but we're gonna come back to this uh, later on. We're making a list of connected printers, and we could also do map drives. So if we have drives mapped to this device, we can list them out here. So what do we do with this information? Well, really nothing at this point, but when I come over to Bob Freeman at Steve Capacity, and Bob gets his new machine and he powers it on, we can automatically deploy this restore app. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just fire it off here, but there's no reason we can't do this as, as required, right? So migrate, restore user data. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and hit. So what's gonna happen here, it's very interesting. Um, as long as the other PC is online, and again, this could be on my home network, um, it's gonna go ahead and take those parameters. So let's actually go back here for a moment. It's gonna go ahead and it's going to um, look at its username, right? So it's gonna say, who's the current user? And if it's the same username, well, it's gonna go ahead and scan this container for a blob containing the username. And it's gonna grab that blob, which happens to be an XML. It's gonna parse it out and it's gonna see, we're gonna connect to this host name, to this share, and this is the creden these are the credentials we're gonna set it up as. So once it does that, it's then gonna run our robocopy commands to pull everything over here. So let's give that a second and see what happens. Okay, wow, so all of a sudden here, um, we went ahead and it looks like, okay, the restore happened successfully. Um, I did this on the, the tenant to tenant migration before. I switched wallpapers to just, you know, all blacked out, just so it's easier to see everything here. But um, that would also bring over if a user had a picture of their kids or their cat or whatever it is they want. So let's take a look at what's actually happening here. So we have a link to an app that's not there. So we do need to, to get that app going. Um, but we have our documents back and we also have, uh, if I open up Google Chrome, so look at that, we got the uh, profile back as well. And again, this is on a new PC, so we can just sign back in to uh to get that going because if you look at our original we have we're signed in as that so it pulls that over as well um okay so now that visual studio is installed look at that instead of the default dark background it brought us right to the to the uh light theme that bob had on their other pc here so in about 10 minutes we were able to migrate all of the user data between PCs, ad hoc connection, peer to peer, um, right over the home network, right? As long as uh, the new PC could see the original uh, in the other tenant brought everything over. So that's a great option to have. And there are some other options as well if we can't do peer to peer, but we're gonna get into that later. So keep watching. One, two.